Welcome back to Cutting Edge. Today we're going to do some real barbecue. We are going to do a rib roast on the rotisserie. That's the creme de la creme of all roasts with superior flavor, texture and juiciness. Stay tuned. I have here four kilo of beautiful black Angus rib roast from Finland. Of all places. Well, yeah, actually, we normally we get our uh, black Angus from US or Australia, but when we saw this at the butcher, we had to try it. This recipe is actually deceptively easy. The only tricky part is getting it mounted correctly on the rotisserie. What I like to do is stand it up like this. I have already measured out my rotisserie to the middle of the grill. And then I'm going to try to find center mass of the rib roast here and then push it down to the end and then I should get it out yep, nicely on the other end so I can get the prongs all the way in. Another set on the other side here. Well, it's so tender there is no resistance. Not, nothing, nothing. It's really yeah. tender. It's really tender. Then I just want to secure this properly. That looks good to me. Next step, we want to truss the rib roast here so we keep it sort of in a round shape while we are cooking. That makes it easier so we cook it evenly all the way through and we don't get any overcooking at any parts of it. So I'm using four pieces of butcher's twine here because I have bones, I have five ribs so that matches with the gap between the ribs. There we go. Nice and tight. You don't want to miss this step because it will change shape when you start cooking it. So this is quite important for success. And there we go. Now we just need to cut off the excess twine. And ready for the seasoning. Ready for the seasoning. We are using a simple rub of sea salt and freshly ground black pepper. And we're going to give it quite a liberal coating. As other cooks we have done, and I've said before, of course, you can use a binder like mustard or olive oil, but I prefer just to put the salt first and let it rest a bit with the rub. That will draw out some moisture and make sure that the rub adheres to the surface. side. And also, don't forget the ends. Like that. And the other end. There we go. That looks good to me. And then we do the same with some black pepper. Now we're almost finished here and the rub we will let that sit for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just so we make sure it adheres properly before we put it on the grill. That is one beautiful rib roast. Now we let it rest. Ready to get it on the grill. I have the gas grill here set up with the two outer burners running on medium 
and the infrared back burner running on full. And then I have a tray in the bottom, a drip pan with uh, potatoes, carrots, leek, zucchini. They will become excellent with the drippings from the rib roast. Let's get it on. Like, there we go. And then let's get a thermometer in. I want it on the thickest part so that we can see this side. I think it's better. Don't get it too close to the metal because that will offset the temperature reading. And now let's get it started and see that it rotates nicely. How long this cooking is going to take? Uh, it will take two, two and a half, maybe three hours, depending. Perfect. Let's close this up and then we will check back in half an hour when we will start basting. For the baste, I have 200 grams of compound butter, garlic, parsley and sea salt. I'm going to add to a pot and then I'm going to give it three tablespoons of fresh rosemary and we let that melt so it's ready to baste our rib roast. We've been on for a good half hour, now it's time to start basting. Take a look at that. Wow! That looks good. Mm, that already smells good. No, no, no. And then carefully, we want to baste this with our butter. Be careful not to take off the rub while we do this. Oh, that smells really good, actually. Mm. I give it a good basting and then we leave it for another maybe half hour. We've hit an internal temperature of 52 degrees Celsius, so now it's time to get our beautiful rib roast off. Let me take this off and then bring it to the cutting board. There we go. We get the temperature probe out. And then I'm going to take off the, the prongs here. There we go. The other one. So no, I don't need that actually. I can just pull it out if I'm a little bit. If I'm good. I'm not. Yeah, there it came. <laughs> there we go. And now we want to take off the butcher's twine. We want to do that now because while it's resting the crust will firm up and then the butcher's twine will destroy the crust when we pull it off. So we take this off now like this, like this, that's it, all four. There we go, put that to the side and then we're going to cover it with aluminium foil And we give it 20 minutes, half an hour to rest, to let the temperature set. We pull it at 52 because the carryover temperature will keep cooking until we reach an internal of about 55, which is the medium we like. Time to carve in and see how we did. When you do this, use a couple of insulation gloves before because you have to touch it and it's still quite warm when you do this. Here we have a beautiful roast and now we're going to cut out the ribs. I have my deboning knife and then we're going to follow the bones down to cut out the roast like this. Oh, that looks good. Mm, interesting. And it smells <laughs> amazing. And obviously this you're going to save for somebody who appreciates some good ribs. But now it's time for the carving knife. The outer pieces here, obviously they are well done because they have been exposed directly in the grill. But already there, look at the, uh, the meat here, it looks beautiful. And as we get in, it's going to get more and more pink.
Look at the color of this. I mean, this is hard to beat. That is just perfect rib roast. This roast beef is going to beat any other cut you can use. Excellent. Let me cut you a piece so you can give your opinion. I have my gloves, so I can do it by hand. Mm. That's much better than anticipated. Mm. This is really, really tender. Excellent, medium, perfect rib roast. This oh is going to make some good eating. Down below, hit subscribe, give us a like, and tell us what you want to see in the next episode. Who's your cook?